TFA fan Freedom is pretty much in the books. We are about a month away from the start of the NFL drafts. So what is a better time to update our rankings today? Discussing our 2023 early wide receiver rankings for the redraft season. Let's get into it. Welcome back in. Welcome back in. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So our wide receiver ones for 2023 as things currently stand. Very similar here in a lot of ways, but we have a few differences. Uh, I have Justin Jefferson at number one, Jamar Chase two, Stephon Diggs three, Cooper Cup at four, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, Garrett Wilson, Jalen Waddell, and T. Higgins wrap up my wide receiver ones. And then you have Cody, who also has Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and then Tyree Kill, Stefan Diggs, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup, CeeDee Lamb, A.J. Brown, Garrett Wilson, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jalen Waddle, and Keenan Allen. So, Cody, let's talk about some wide receiver ones. Yeah, man, a very uh, similar list between the two of us, which is funny because we didn't, you know, share these beforehand or even really talk about our rankings. But uh, just the ones that I kind of was like going through and not really sure what to do and, could, you know, kind of could have moved up, could have moved down type of thing. Devontae Adams, uh, first off, just not really sure what to expect from Jimmy G in this offense. In the two seasons that Jimmy G has played at least 15 games, he's never averaged more than 30 pass attempts per game. I think his highest was like 29.75. But that was also in the Shanahan offense, right? Different offense here. But obviously this is the McDaniels offense now. You know, we've seen Adams in the last five seasons. Adams has had less than a 30% target share one time in those five seasons. So could have moved him up. I, you know, I thought about, you know, maybe even putting Cooper cup ahead of him. You know, I thought of, I did originally have Devonte Adams ahead of Stefan Diggs, but this is kind of where I landed on with him. Uh, then with him on St. Brown, he was wide receiver nine last year and half PPR points per game. And that was without TJ Hawkinson for more than half the season and him getting more than double the targets of the next player on the Lions, which was DeAndre Swift. I think St. Brown had like 146 targets on the season last year. The next closest was Swift with 70. Now we have Jamison Williams should be ready to go, should be healthy in this offense, and we should finally see him in like a, in an actual role instead of you know kind of coming in for a few snaps here and there, which is kind of what he did at the tail end last season. And then also today, they signed Marvin Jones. Not that I'm expecting Jones to come in, legit role in this offense and earn you know a bunch of targets or anything, but that's still going to be another body that they're going to have to contend with. And I also think the Lions are a pretty good bet to draft one of these tight ends that we like so much and with as deep as this tight end class is. So, uh, you know, we, we talked about it a few weeks ago on the ADP show. He's still being drafted with an ADP of 15.9 on underdog and as much as i love arsb the sun god i am all the way out at that price and the last one kev i know you you know you talk about not being a dynasty guy but then you hate old players which is just like the most dynasty thing of all keenan allen still keeping him in my top 12 once he was healthy last year from weeks 11 to 17 he was wide receiver eight and half ppr points per game all the dude does is command targets, and I don't think that changes in 2023. For me, I just want to hit on a couple of guys. When I want to hit on Garrett Wilson, uh, you know, having him in the top 12, uh, I feel pretty good about it. I think that's also in the mind of that they're going to get Aaron Rodgers, that the Aaron Rodgers saga will eventually come to an end, and he will find himself in the Big Apple. And I think if that happens, I mean, even last year, if you look at just the, the mirage of quarterbacks that they had last year, Zach Wilson and uh, Mike White and Joe Flacco and I mean, they had so many really just bad quarterbacks last year. He still uh, was very strong option last year. 83 receptions on 147 targets last year for 1,100 yards, four touchdowns, and a 29% target share in that offense. Now, uh, he was also very good, uh, ninth in red zone targets, 29th in yards per route run, as well as 26th in yards per team pass attempt as well last year. He was only 30th in uh, fantasy points per game last year with 12.7. So I do think there's some room to, for improvement here. Yeah, you know, last year was his rookie season. And so they shift Elijah Moore out of town. Now they did add some other uh, some other options as well there. This offseason, Alan Lazard being one of them, former uh, Aaron Rodgers. Great. Uh, who knows? Maybe they'll add uh, Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson will come out of retirement. And uh, 
you know, what ha- what have you there to, t- to get the band back together for Aaron Rodgers. But overall, I think Garrett Wilson is in really good hands, and I, it is a massive upgrade over what they had last year. So I do like him. And then we, I also want to talk about Jalen Waddell uh, really quickly as well. Uh, he played really well last year. Now, this is a team that is very condensed in terms of their target share. Mike isicki has gone. Not that it matters because they didn't use him like that anyways. But him and Tyree Kill, sounds like Tua Tagovailoa has cleared, you know, the concussion stuff. So if he can stay healthy this year, I think Jalen Waddle uh, could have another really solid year. He had a 21% target share in that offense. Did have over 1,300 receiving yards and eight touchdowns. He was also wide receiver 12 in fantasy points per game. He also did that on the back of uh, being fourth in yards per outrun, eighth in yards per team pass attempt, and first in yards per target last year, and 10th in route win rate. So Jalen Waddle is that dude, and I think he is a, a very solid bet to be another top 12 season here. So, uh, you know, those are the two guys that I really want to hit on among the, the wide receiver ones. Let's flip it over here and go over to the wide receiver twos, where I have DK Metcalf, DJ Moore, Devonta Smith, Chris Olave, Michael Pittman Jr., Debo Samuel, Keenan Allen at 19, Amari Cooper, Calvin Ridley, Mike Williams, Jerry Judy, and Brandon Cooks. And you have Cody T. Higgins, Devonta Smith, Amari Cooper, DK Metcalf, Chris Olave, DeAndre Hopkins, Debo Samuel, Calvin Ridley, Michael Pittman, Mike Williams, DJ Moore, and Jerry Judy. So, First, I want to talk about DJ Moore. Really big addition here for them. Getting traded from the Panthers to the Bears. Justin Fields now has a legitimate, you know, wide receiver one. I always, I've always felt like DJ Moore is a much better wide receiver than we've ever got to see from him, but he's always been paired with really bad quarterbacks. And I, I did the legwork for you if you could, in case you were curious who those quarterbacks were. So 2018, his rookie season. His quarterbacks, and these are all players that started games for them. This isn't just the quarterbacks they had on the roster. All these quarterbacks started. You had Cam Newton, Taylor Heineke, and Kyle Allen. 2019, we had Kyle Allen, Will Greer, and Cam Newton. 2020 was Teddy Bridgewater. 2021 was Sam Darnold, Cam Newton, P.J. Walker. But then this year now, uh, you know, he gets Justin Fields, right? And so I feel like this is a is a big time upgrade in terms of just overall quarterback talent. You can argue whatever you want. I think Justin Fields is a legitimate quarterback um, and somebody that would just really had no other weapons. And now DJ Moore gets to play with the best quarterback he's ever played with. Last season he had 63 catches, 888 receiving yards, and seven touchdowns on 118 targets with a 27% target share. I think it's very fair to think that he could possibly reach. 130, maybe 135 targets here in this uh, Bears offense. I definitely think they're telling you they want to throw the ball a lot more. I do not think this is going to be run-first offense anymore. And so that's why I have DJ Moore so high. DJ Moore is terrific in, in yards after the catch. He has been a yak monster throughout his career. So I love this for DJ Moore. I think this is a big upgrade for quarterback situation here. And so I, I'm all in on DJ Moore in 2023. Yeah, I think where we – uh differ there as I do just think this is still going to be a a run heavy run first offense and that's that's why I can't really like I wanted to get him up a little bit higher but I just you know I'll probably miss DJ Moore in all my drafts because I kind of just want to see it first before before I buy in and I was actually surprised to see I checked underdog ADP and he was only wide receiver 21 I expected him to be uh kind of in the range where you have him ranked uh you know, considering the the trade and everything that has happened. And, you know, he definitely has his truthers out there. So I was a little surprised to see that he wasn't higher on uh, on underdog. Last, I just want to hit on Jerry Judy. Now, he's he is a much a speculation right now. Is he going to get traded? I don't think they're going to trade him. It would make no sense. Why do you bring in Sean Payton? You, you pay him all this money. You're trying to, uh, you know, turn around Russell Wilson. You're going to trade away his best wide receiver. Like, it just doesn't add up. It doesn't pass the smell test to me. I know there's a lot of rumors and speculation out there. I just can't see them doing it. Like, if you're going to trade one of them, trade Cortland Sutton. I mean, Jerry Judy is younger. I think he's a better fit for, uh, you know, for Russell Wilson as well at this point. And, you know, we saw him last year, 100 targets for Jerry Judy, 20% target share, 67 catches, almost hit that 1,000 receiving yard number, six touchdowns, 13.6 fantasy points per game. And Cody, you just would have held strong last year. You were the Jerry Judy guy. All of us that were on here were, were all Cortland Sutton. You just could have held strong. You would, you would have been right on that. But uh, overall, he was still really good. Fifth in yards after the catch per reception. 16th in yards per outrun. 21st in yards per team pass attempt as well. So Jerry Judy was very good last year. And I think he could take another step. And I think there's a lot of belief that, you know, Russell Wilson can kind of get turned around here. Maybe he goes back to a little bit less of letting Russ cook. Going back to more of a run-heavy offense. 
where they, you know, let him utilize play action a lot more or something that he is much better at doing, be able to take those deep shots. So I think Jerry Judy set up to be a really strong option this year. And if he gets traded, unless he gets traded to the fucking Patriots, I keep hearing this Patriots stuff. I'm like, I don't want anybody to go to the Patriots. Please no. send no wide receivers to the Patriots <laughs> because I have no interest in that whatsoever. And so Jerry Judy, I think if he stays with the Broncos, I think he's a very strong wide receiver too for 2023. Yeah, I'm with you there. I will just say uh, on a side note, I was listening to – uh, the football guys podcast earlier today and Cecil Lammy, who does some, some radio stuff, for the Broncos and, you know, has some connections was saying that it's uh, Jerry Judy, isn't necessarily a, uh, a team guy, so to speak, you know, not necessarily always bought in, not giving it his all. And it's not that they aren't listening to offers. They, they want it first for Jerry Judy. So I don't think they get that, but that is kind of what the, you know, when Peyton came out and said, you know, we're, we're not interested in trading either of those guys it's because they haven't gotten the price for it. I think if they were to get a first, they would definitely send Judy out the door. They, they are looking to be more uh, run heavy this year. Just a couple of these wide receiver twos that I just want to hit on. DK Metcalf I have here, and then I have Tyler Lockett just outside. So ranking these two as, you know, basically wide receiver twos for this year. It feels like such a trap. Like, I, I know Geno Smith was legit all year, had a fantastic season, but I'm so afraid he just turns back into a pumpkin. You know what I mean? Like, it, like I, I really want to I, I want to buy in. I You know, it's such a feel-good story. But, like, I, I – man, like, there's part of me, like, putting DK here, who else do I really fill in this spot right now? You know, I, I definitely don't have a, 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 lot, of, a lot of oomph behind that ranking like i said just just thinking that gino could just turn back into kind of what he was up until up until last year so that was one i i kind of struggled with in terms of placing them and uh you know i, I was looking at the the rankings we had the first time we did this early in the off season i've definitely come back down a little bit on calvin ridley and i'm happy to see that you have him here in the in the wide receiver twos kev um I'm still betting on the bounce back for, for this season. I know it's been two years since he's really played, but the dude was wide receiver four in 2020, had nearly 1,400 yards, nine scores. I definitely don't think we see anywhere near the same target share of what he had that year in Atlanta, right? He's going to provide a spark for this offense that saw Trevor Lawrence have a lower average depth of target than guys like Ryan Tannehill, Mac Jones, Davis Mills, and Kenny Pickett. So I definitely think he's going to provide a spark here, and that's that's why me and you also have, I'm assuming, uh, Christian Kirk a little bit lower in the ranks as well. But, yeah, I'm, I'm still on that Calvin Ridley train unless his ADP holds up in redraft leagues, which I don't necessarily think it will. Right now in underdog, he is going as wide receiver 19 with an ADP of 37.3. I don't think it's going to hold up by the time that August gets here. If it does, it's going to be hard for me to pull the trigger on that, but um, still really like him. And then the, the last guy I want to mention really quickly is just Amari Cooper, wide receiver nine in half PPR points per game last year. I think Deshaun Watson bounces back. I know obviously, you know, Elijah Moore being there, um, you know, we, we saw like half a season from Elijah Moore. Then obviously, you know, the, he was disgruntled, all last year and that definitely was not a fantasy friendly uh receiving situation to be in so kind of still have to see what happens with him but i think like i said deshaun watson takes a step forward from where he was last year and i think uh, amari cooper is still going to be that guy in the offense uh let's let's uh go ahead and get over to the wide receiver three so we can get this thing wrapped up i have tyler lockett terry mclaurin christian watson deandre hopkins chris godwin Marquise Brown, Drake London, Deontay, Mike Evans, Christian Kirk, Traylon Burks, and Kadarius Tony at wide receiver three. And then you have uh, Co Brandon Cooks, Tyler Lockett, uh, Watson, Godwin, McLaurin, Mike Evans, Christian Kirk, Ayuk, Sutton, London, Deontay, and Juju Smith-Schuster now with the New England Patriots. So, Cody, hit us with uh, some of your wide receiver threes. This uh, is an interesting group, right? Um, you know, I, I think the guy that I am highest on, although I don't have him ranked that way in this group, is, is Christian Watson. Um, I, I think that out of this group, he could be the one that has the highest ceiling, but we just don't know what we're getting out of Jordan Love quite yet. But I think he's going to be the clear wide receiver one in that offense. We saw last year 
that they were getting Watson involved in a bunch of different ways, you know, all, all over every level of the field, you know, jet sweeps down the field, short, uh, short and inter- intermediate range as well. So really like him, like I, I want Baker Mayfield to be a thing so badly. And for, for my ranking of Godwin and Evans to just be God awful. Like I want both of those guys to finish as wide receiver twos, but it's, I just can't do it. I, I can't put them there as much as I want to. Um, it, it's, it's just really hard to get them up there. It, it feels dirty having Debo and Ayuk where I do. But again, like that, that's another offense where it's just there's more question marks than, uh, you know, than I think what, what I'd, I would like to spend the capital on in terms of, you know, rankings and being in the draft and that, that sort of thing. Um, you know, Debo on the field, off the field. We see him super involved. We see Ayuk have some, have some moments there. We have to remember Kittle was banged up last year too. So if all three of those guys are healthy and now you're adding in Christian McCaffrey, like is Brock Purdy going to be ready at the beginning of the year? Are they going to put in Darnold over, uh, over Trey? Like it, there's just so many questions right now that, um, you know, I want to have them higher. And apparently, you know, Ayuk was getting some buzz as someone who a name that might potentially be moved, but that's kind of been squashed as well. So, you know, Drake London is is a guy who I wanted to have a little bit higher, but I think he finishes like wide receiver 39 last year. And I just don't see a lot changing with, with that offense. Um, even if they were to get Lamar Jackson. Like, is, is that going to change a ton in terms of what they want to do? Then I think the next uh, fit you're probably looking at is Anthony Richardson. Again, that's similar. You know, Desmond Ritter, we saw like a couple flashes from, but, you know, still, you know, not wanting to really buy into that. And then, you know, Taylor Heineke is in there. One thing we can say is he does seem to uh, pepper his his favorite target. So if Heineke is the guy, I think I would move London up. Um, you know, it's cra- <laughs> it's cra- as crazy as that sounds. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to keep him down there. And, you know, Deontay Johnson, I think, is catching some undeserved flack. There, there was a quote from Mike Tomlin that came out. He was like, yeah, you know, I, I think uh, Deontay not having any touchdowns is a product of, of our offense. Oh, really? Like, <laughs> like you, you think that's it? Oh, that – very, very insightful stuff. But yeah, I, I think he could have a little bit of a bounce back in, in this offense. You know, a couple other guys that that I want to hit on here really quickly um, that I have here at wide receiver three. Um, one is the Washington Commanders wide receivers. Like, I don't know what to do, especially if, if they're going to have Sam Howell at quarterback. Like, I don't really know what to expect there. I know there's some speculation that they could possibly bring in Lamar Jackson. Uh, that doesn't really seem like that. that's a thing either. Um, so... If they roll into the year with Sam Howe, it just seems crazy to me that that's what they're going to do. But maybe they're going to tank for uh, Caleb Williams because they don't have uh, Taylor Heineke there anymore. Um, but, you know, we'll see what they decide to do there. But I just have to lower down the wide receivers a little bit here. I know that they were able to produce last year with some subpar quarterback play, but I don't really know what to, like I said, to expect from Sam Howe. And so Terry McLaurin, I have him kind of as a high-end wide receiver three. I wanted to put Jahan Dotson as a wide receiver uh, three here. I really like yeah. Jahan Dotson, the prospect. Former Penn State great Jahan Dotson, that is. Um, That's right. It, but um, – I just couldn't kind of get him up there. I think he is somebody definitely to monitor somebody I'm going to want to draft, you know, because I think his ADP is not really going to uh, get it anywhere out of control. But I think both of those guys, that's why I have him there. But, uh, you know, the other guys here, Kadarius Tony, I have him on here. And that's because the Chiefs have to have throw the ball to somebody this year. And as of right fucking now, that that, this is their list. They have MBS, they have Kadarius Tony, and they have Sky Moore. That's their oh, and Justin Ross, which if you're around, if you live in Kansas City, it has been Justin Ross hype for the last couple of weeks because he posted a couple of videos of him running up a hill. But you know, there was a ton of hype about Justin Ross heading into last year, especially uh, you know, through mini camp and stuff like that. He was crushing mini camp, but they don't really have anybody else. And we keep waiting. There was all this like, okay, they're gonna sign somebody, they're gonna trade for somebody. And yet it has been deathly quiet around here about wide receiver. I still think there's a scenario that they possibly could trade for a DeAndre Hopkins, but it's not really the path that Breath Beach has taken. Everything has been uh, young guys, everything. like All the players they've signed this offseason have been young players. They they really do not go after, uh, you know, they've added guys like 
Carlos Dunlap, who is obviously older, but it was a very team team friendly, cheap deal. They are not going to pay DeAndre Hopkins, or I just don't see it where they're going to pay him 15, 16, 17 million dollars a year for the next two years for a 30 plus year old wide receiver. I don't think they're going to sign Odell Beckham. So it comes down to what the fuck are they going to do at wide receiver? Because they have nothing else. And so that's why I have Kadarius Tony. They've talked about Kadarius Tony all offseason, saying that he's going to be their number one wide receiver, but there's that elephant in the room is can his fucking hamstrings hang up for an entire year because he can't stay healthy. He has not stayed healthy the first two years, but I'm also not a doctor and I'm not going to play that game of trying to predict injury, but he seems like the guy that a lot of people are going to be out on because of it. But if we go into the year and this is really their wide receiver room, I mean, somebody has got to catch passes other than Travis Kelsey. And so Canarius Tony is an electric player. They, they do a lot with him. Um, and so I do think that he could be like a wide receiver three if he can stay healthy for this team and with wide receiver two upside. So I have him there. I do also like Sky Moore. I think Sky Moore can bounce back in a big way as well. Andy Reid typically doesn't love rookie wide receivers. And we saw it last year. They gave him really no opportunity whatsoever. And so I think Sky Moore could be kind of like a cheap buy low as well in this offense. But that kind of wraps up the wide receiver threes that we have here. That being said, I appreciate everybody checking out. Let us know what you think we got right, what we got wrong in the comment section below. And we will see you on the next one. Bye. Mm-hmm.